revolution is over, but it's still a long way from here to the mission. If we're going to get the organ back in time, we'd better get started. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Wong, Mr. Wong, wait. Hey, boy, Miss Wong, very busy today. Big party in hotel last night, make so much work. But, Missy Wong, look, a letter from Mr. Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin, work can wait. You read letter, hey, boy. Oh, uh, no, uh, up here I say, uh, San Savior Mission, and uh, then it say, dear Missy Wong and uh, hey, boy. Oh, it's uh, Missy Wong and hey, boy, you and me. Uh, after I finished my business in Laredo, I came here to San Xavier Mission to see my friend Father Otoo. Oh. Had hoped to be able to lie in the hammock in lovely garden here and get good rest. But I am afraid won't be time for that as I have offered to do an uh, errand for the good father. Uh, however, I plan to be back in San Francisco in time for the opera ball. But hey boy, opera ball last night. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, look, me here, Missy Wong. See this date? Mr. Paladin write this letter a long time ago. Take long time to get here. Hey, what happened you suppose he don't get home? Oh, poor Mr. Paladin. Yeah, Mr. Wong. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Paladin don't mind missing opera ball. He go to lots of parties. Oh, Mr. Wong mean poor Mr. Paladin. He never have time to rest in hammock. <laughs> That's a warning signal for all drivers. And that can be a warning signal for drowsy drivers on long, monotonous trips. You see, driving can make you drowsy no matter how much sleep you get. And driving and dozing just don't mix. Why take chances? Take no-dose, stay-awake tablets. Millions of times a year, safe no-dose keeps drivers awake and alert. Helps you bounce back so that you feel sharp, ready for any emergency. How does no-dose do it? Ask your doctor. He'll tell you that no-dose contains a safe and accurate amount of caffeine, the same refreshing stimulant you get in your coffee or tea. But safe no-dose acts faster, is handier and more reliable. Best of all, it is not habit-forming. And no-dose is so safe, it is legally sold on a national basis without a prescription. Get no-dose, stay-awake tablets to help you stay awake and alert. It could save your life. I had made the offer to Father O'Toole to see that an organ, a gift to his church, was delivered from the Gulf of Mexico to his San Xavier mission. I was accompanied by Tono, a fine young Indian who had been reared at the mission. The wagon road we had to follow led us through the war zone of a revolution that was in progress. But Father O'Toole was well known and well loved, and I was sure that an explanation of our trip would grant us safe conduct. I didn't know, of course, that confusion at the Customs House loading docks would result in a switching of crates, so that instead of the organ, we were hauling rifles intended for the government militia. Things were looking pretty grim for a while, after we were halted by the People's Army and sentenced to be shot for aiding the enemy. But with some quick thinking, fast talking and decisive action, it seemed that now we had the situation well in hand. It looks like we have just won a revolution. Yes, Tono. I guess it's all over but the shouting, but uh, we better get Pancho and move out of here fast before somebody decides it's time for another uprise. Here comes General Perez. Ah, senor. Well, General. Senor, you are the hero of the day. Oh, no, it was nothing, General. Just a simple matter of cutting down the odds. 
The militia was well-armed, and your boys weren't. That makes it a little difficult to win a war. See, but what is this miracle you perform for my poor little army that rifles of the militia fire backwards? Oh, well, Tono and I ram the barrels of their rifles with adobe mud. Ah, tal estrategia. Uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, such superb military strategy. Oh. We were lucky that the soldiers of the militia sleep so soundly during their siesta. Uh, it is a moment of glory for the rebel Tosos. The army of the people. You, senor, and your compañero will please to join in celebration of victory. Oh, well, thank you, General, but we don't have time. Uh, when you and your men stopped our wagon and I told you I was hauling an organ to San Xavier Mission, well, I was telling you the truth. But the organ was delivered here to the militia. It is here now? Yes. Oh, yes, we found it all right. It's in that little stone jail over there. What is organ doing in jail? Well, the cell is jointly occupied by the organ and the man who delivered it. I believe he was scheduled to meet the firing squad. The militia didn't take kindly to uncrating an organ when it expected rifles. Por supuesto, of course. I shall say that the organo is released to you, senor. Oh, say, uh, General, I'd like to have the prisoner, too, if you don't mind. You want this prison? <laughs> I'm afraid so. His name is Pancho. I had a little run-in with him at the Matamoros. I don't think I trust him any further than I can throw that organ, but uh, he can play it, and we may need him. This becomes confusing, senor. You see, General, Father O'Toole is counting on having this organ for mass when the bishop visits San Xavier, but no one in the parish knows how to play it. And just before the battle, we were hiding back at the jail there, and we heard Pancho play very well, too. So uh, I figure if it's all right with you, we'll just deliver him along with the organ. Just as you like, senor. We are in your debt. Senor Paladin, these are fine horses the general took from the militia and gave to you. Yes, Pancho. With the time we've lost, we'd never make it without an ox team we started with. Uh, we are lucky. Horses are hard to come by in this part of the country. Beautiful animals, beautiful people, beautiful world. Pancho's glad to be alive and not dead from the firing squad. This is a lucky day. But why were you delivering arms to the militia, Pancho? Were you on their side? Pancho is only on the side of Pancho. I deliver arms to the militia because the militia can pay. Make business importante. That's all. Uh, well, just don't you forget our business importante. Eh? Oh, no, senor. For my life, I play organo for the mass at the mission of San Javier. We will be reaching the town of Roma pretty soon. I know. I think we better stop there for the night. I don't like to take the time, but the horses need the rest. Roma, I, I know this town. I think maybe because this is a lucky day for Pancho, I'll sit for a short time at a game of chance. <laughs> you don't press your luck too far, Pancho. Clerk. Hey, clerk. Clerk. Mr. Paladin. Mr. Paladin. I'll be with you in a moment, Tono, as soon as I settle up for the hotel. No, no, come quick. Well, what is it? Our organ crate is sitting out there in front of the hotel. What well, can't be. It's on the wagon down at delivery. No, it's out there on the boardwalk, and a man is driving off with our horses and wagon. He what? Oh, no. Yes. You see? There. There he is down the street. Hey. Hey. Stop, you. Hey, you. Whoa. Stop Whoa. there. Well, now, uh, what's your trouble, friend? Mister, horse stealing's a pretty serious matter. Well, now, don't that beat all. Climb down off that wagon. Say, what's eating you? This happens to be my team and wagon you're driving. Oh, no, it ain't. It's mine. How do you figure? It's mine on account of four of a kind beat a straight. What are you talking about? I win this outfit fair and square in a poker game last night. I'm afraid night. that's a lie. This is my outfit. Now, looky here, mister. You climb down off that wagon. I'm just going to do that, and you're going to be sorry. Now, Steve Perkins don't take lightly to being called a lie on a horse thief. Now! <coughs> Mr. Paladin! That's for the liar. Uh, you? Yeah, looks like I gotta whomp you again. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I... Oh, that was some punch. Yeah, looks like he's out for a while. Mr. Paladin... That's the man who was playing cards with Pancho last night. Pancho? 
Of course. Oh, I should have thought of that. Where is Poncho? I couldn't find him this morning. He didn't sleep in his room last night. I guess he figured his luck ran out, and he'd better run out, too. I'm afraid I owe this man an apology. Well, Tono, we haven't time to argue the fine points of this thing. Why? What are we going to do? Get some rope out of the wagon there. Rope? Yes, we're going to tie this fellow up, shove a gag in his mouth, and then load him and the organ in the wagon and get on our way. Why do we take him? Well, it's his outfit. He win it fair and square, as he said. But I'm afraid we're going to have to borrow it, whether he likes it or not. Well, at least Pancho didn't gamble the organ. He was probably saving it for the next hand. But now we're back where we were. Nobody to play for mass. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll worry about that later. There he is again. I guess I better untie him. I hope he decides to be reasonable about this. I wouldn't count on it. No. I'm afraid he has a point. Oh, no. Ooh. Uh... Say, uh, Perkins, uh, look, look, uh, Perkins, I'm sorry we had to shanghai you like this, but we needed the wagon, and there wasn't time to argue, you see. Now, whether Poncho had a right to bet it or not, I, well, I guess it's yours, and we'll pay you for this trip, but we have to get to San Xavier Mission. Um, climb on back there, Tono, and take the gag off him. Sure. Here, sir. Just let me untie it. There. You... Don't say it or you'll stay tied up. Uh, all right. You win. Well, let me tell you, the only reason Steve Perkins is standing still for this kind of shoving around is... Yeah, because I was headed toward the mission anyway. You were? Yeah, they got one of them fiesta things going on in town there. Usually some pretty good betting money floating around at them celebrations. Are you a professional gambler? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly, but I managed to pick up a little change here and there. When I win these horses, I figure to take them to the fiesta and race them. Our horses? My horses, and don't forget it. Mister, you don't know horse flesh. They ain't hauling horses, they're running horses. Uh, it doesn't matter. If they'll just get this organ to San Xavier, I'll be satisfied. On time, Tono. Almost there, Tono. Yes, it's been quite a trip. Yeah, what's so special about this here organ? It was a gift to the mission. Father O'Toole is very anxious to have it when the bishop visits San Xavier. He'll have it, it seems, but there is no one to play it. Hey, Tono. Yes? You engine, ain't you? Yes. Well, how come you don't dress like an engine or, or talk like an engine? I was raised at the mission and went to American schools. Oh, I see. Well, now, hey, look you over there. Figure that some of your kinfolk? Ah, a band of Indians on horseback. They are Navajo. That is my tribe. Well, how do you like that? Look, they got a rope around that feller's neck. They're leading him behind their horses. Hey, that looks like Poncho. Whoa, whoa. Mr. Paladin, it is Poncho. Well, say it. That's the fellow I played poker with. Now, what kind of business importante do you suppose he tried this time, Tono? I don't know, but he can play the organ. Oh, yes, yes, he can. Well, I suppose we better go see what we can do for him. Come on now. Get out of there. Come on. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergie, I think someone's looking for you. Oh, Mr. Bergen. Well, hello, <laughs> Effie Clinker. What's wrong? My car battery is run down. I think it's an acid condition. Oh, I see. Well, have you seen a serviceman? Well, I had a blind date with a sailor last night, but he got away. <laughs> no, I mean a mechanic. <laughs> Seeing you own a General Motors car, you should see your GM dealer for service. His mechanics are GM trained. They have specialized tools and factory-approved parts to provide your fine GM car with the GM care it deserves. So if you own a Chevrolet car or truck, 
a Pontiac, an Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, or a GMC truck, you should make a date with a General Motors serviceman. Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Will you have blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> What's the story, Tono? What'd the Indians say? Well, as near as I can tell, Pancho wandered into the Indian camp this morning and offered to trade some cattle for a horse. Cattle? Yes. But it turned out the cattle he traded already belonged to the Indians. It was some stock they had turned out to graze. <laughs> say, he's some slick feller, ain't he? Uh, well, never quite slick enough. Well, what now, Tono? What are they going to do with him? This is a small band of Navajo. They have set up a camp just beyond the missions. They want no trouble. Yeah? They are willing to release Pancho, but they insist he must walk to the mission that way, with the rope around his neck, following the horses. How far is the mission from here? Twelve miles. <laughs> Seems a little cruel. <laughs> Maybe not. Give that old boy some time to figure a couple of new angles. Yeah. Yeah, you could be right, Perkins. <laughs> Oh, it's good to be back in your lovely garden, Father. And it's good to have you, lad. Bless you for the happiness you brought me. I'm afraid the trip took longer than we planned. I hope you didn't worry, Father. Not at all, Tono, my son. I had my faith, and you had my prayers. Well, they came in handy a couple of times, Father. Oh. Uh, will you have more lemonade, Mr. Parkins? Well, no thanks, Father. I got a gift. I got a little business to take care of. Business? Yeah, you see, I got to set me up a little race meet. Get out a few bets. Oh. Yeah, and I gotta move fast. Now, this here fiesta is gonna be over Saturday night, so uh, I gotta get going to promote this race meet for Sunday morning. Sunday? Uh, but that's the day the bishop will be here. Well, doggone, Father, I don't aim to interfere with your business. Oh, now, now don't give it another thought, son. It'll work out. Well, uh, if you must go, I'll walk out with you. Well, thank you, Father. But please now come again. Well, sure, I'd be right proud to, Father. Hey, so long, fellas. Well, see you later, Perkins. Well, Tono, we had a few bad moments. But it was worth it, wasn't it, to see Father O'Toole so happy? <laughs> Say, you know what I'm going to do right now? I am going to get in that hammock, and I am going to stay there. Oh, no, no, wait. It huh? is not time to relax yet. What do you mean? I know Father O'Toole's flock. If Perkins sets up this race meet, the pews will be empty Sunday. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's no way to impress the bishop. Maybe I ought to talk to Perkins. No. No, I think there is another way. Come on. Uh, where? We will have to take a little trip. Oh, no. Yes, out to the Navajo camp. Well, why? Mr. Paladin, it hasn't rained here in a long time. You know the dust is about a foot deep. Well, what's that got to do with it? If it should rain... The mud would be so deep, no horse could run. But it never rains this time of year out here. When I was talking to the Navajos today, I learned that in their camp is a man I remember from my childhood, a wonderful old medicine man. I recall that his rain chants worked miracles. Ah, I see. We must impress the bishop. Of course. Look, Mr. Paladin. Hey, that's Pancho. Hola, senores. Hey, Pancho. Where'd you get that horse? Uh, Pancho make a little business importante. Oh, beautiful world. Pancho's got to be alive. And now Pancho come to play organo for the mass at San Javier Mission. I think we can start now. Most of the crowd seems to be out. Yeah. I guess so. Well, Tono, I'd say the bishop's mass was quite a success. It certainly was. Look, look at Father O'Toole at the door, beaming at his flock as they file out. The mysterious ways of God performing his miracles, eh, Tono? Yes. Encantado, Padre. Bless you, my child. Father? Ah, Tono and Paladin, God bless you, my sons. Thank you, Father. It was a wonderful day, wasn't it? Oh, my. It uh, is a day I'll remember all my life. Say, the bishop was impressed, wasn't he? Oh, indeed he was. But 
How strange it should rain today. Hey, boy. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, my. This is fine you home again at last. Uh, Here, uh, let the uh, hey boy take back. Thank you, hey boy. Uh, this was a successful trip? Yes, yes, it was. Oh, it seemed too bad you missed party. Big opera ball. No, hey boy. That wasn't important at all, since I was able to help to make a very good man very happy. Oh, hey, Mr. Paladin, Missy Wong pretty upset about you. Oh, why? I don't know. Women kind of funny. You, hey boy, don't understand women very good. <laughs> I know, hey boy, I know. Oh, uh, there are Missy Wong now. Uh, Missy Wong, look here. Oh, Mr. Paladin, welcome home. Thank you, Miss Wong. It's good to be home. Mr. Paladin, did you ever have time to lie in hammock, have good rest? No. No, I didn't, Miss Wong. Oh. When I finally had the time, uh, it was raining. Oh, too bad. Missy Wong afraid of that. So Missy Wong have nice surprise. Surprise? Surprise, yes, sir. Here, let me open door to room. All nice and clean, ready for you. See? Oh, Miss Wong, a hammock. Hey, sir, hammock. Well, that is a very nice surprise. <laughs> Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty. Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK? I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Don Diamond, Harry Bartell, Russell Arms, and Bill Idelson. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.